This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1881. Five reasons ditching fire for fire might be your best financial move by Lisa Harrison of madmoneymonster.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. For now, let's get right to it and continue optimizing your life. Five reasons ditching fire for fire might be your best financial move by Lisa Harrison of madmoneymonster.com. I first coined the term fire in a post I wrote back in November 2017. If you're not familiar with it, it stands for financial independence optional retirement. I first introduced FIOR to the personal finance community when I started questioning my original FIRE goal. Specifically, I was questioning whether or not retiring early was the right goal for me. Ultimately, I decided just having the option to retire was really what I wanted. That's the point that I ditched the FIRE movement for the more realistic version of FIOR. FIRE versus FIOR. Before we jump into the five reasons ditching fire for fire might be your best financial move, let me first explain the difference between the two movements. Fire stands for financial independence retire early. Unlike fire folks, fire adherents have the ultimate goal of saving enough money, usually 25 times their annual expenses, to pull the plug on their corporate jobs and pursue a life of freedom as early as their 20s, 30s, or 40s. Oftentimes, though, that early retirement freedom is supplemented with side hustle income to reduce the amount of money that needs to be saved and or pulled from the nest egg for living expenses each year. Fire also becomes a little more difficult to achieve if you, like me, are in the midst of adulthood. Think paying a mortgage, saving for college and retirement, and maybe even financially supporting parents. Enter the FIOR movement. If you happen to be in a position in which early retirement is enticing and exciting, but not necessarily the right goal for your life stage, consider switching to FIOR for a more realistic and leisurely journey towards financial improvement and eventually financial independence. Number one, FIOR takes the pressure off. Let's face it, achieving financial independence and subsequently an early retirement isn't always easy. If you're not earning a high income, it's going to take lots of frugality, discipline, and perseverance to reach your goal. That frugality and discipline is likely going to mean delayed gratification and could take several forms. Smaller or non-existent vacations, eliminating unnecessary expenditures, TV, dinners out, gym memberships, etc., cutting back on clothing purchases, driving older cars, or not living in your ideal location. By adopting FIOR, you'll be able to enjoy life along the way by not having to be extreme in all areas. Sure, you can't splurge on everything, but you'll definitely be able to splurge on a few things that are important to you while still maintaining a high savings rate towards your FIOR goal. This balance is something most family members are able to agree on. Number two, FIOR makes work more fun. When you're on FIOR, work becomes more fun. At least it did for me. With every month that passes, I get a few steps closer to financial independence and the option to do whatever I choose to do. Since I feel more financially secure, I feel more freedom to speak my mind, ask for what I want, and try different assignments. And I have fun doing it. Having fun at work might happen to you too. The more money you stash away for your future, the more secure you're going to feel and the more fun your day job will likely become because, wait for it, you won't need it. Number three, forget the side hustle and enjoy more free time. I have a love-hate relationship with the idea of side hustles. As a wife, mother, full-time employee, and part-time blogger, I really take issue when the internet simply suggests starting a side hustle as a means of earning more money to supplement an early retirement. Sure, side hustles are typically passion projects and can turn into full-time gigs that can replace a standard W-2 job. But the time involved in building up a side hustle to replace full-time employment with benefits means a ton of work. Usually that work happens during nights and weekends. You know, during the time you have to spend with your family and friends. And if you're in a relationship with or even without kids, 
Creating a successful side hustle can be extremely difficult. I'm speaking from experience here. Building up this blog to the point that it actually makes some money has taken years and countless hours of work. I often question whether the time spent on it was actually worth it. Fior allows you to take the long and windy road to Fi. When you're taking that route, a side hustle to increase income doesn't have to play a role in your plan. Number four, Fior allows you to scale back your savings rate. Trying to reach an early retirement could mean a staggering savings rate. Some folks on the fire path reach a savings rate of 70% or more. At one point, our savings rate hit 70%, but it wasn't easy. In order to do so, we increased our income and scaled back significantly on almost everything. Switching to Fior will allow you to scale back your savings rate. You probably won't be scaling it back to 10%, but scaling it back to a more reasonable percentage is going to give you breathing room to enjoy your journey and not just the final prize. And number five, Fior gives you options. Most of all, Fior gives you options. The Fior movement doesn't necessarily end with early retirement, although it could if that's what you ultimately decide. When you're on the path to Fior and you reach Fi, you have the option to quit your job, change jobs, stay on the job, or anything else you can dream up. It might take you a bit longer to reach Fior, but crossing the finish line will be just as rewarding and might even turn out to be the best financial move you ever make for your life. Whether you're on fire or Fior, reaching financial independence is key to changing your life and the lives of the people you love forever. You just listened to the post titled, Five Reasons Ditching Fire for Fior Might Be Your Best Financial Move by Lisa Harrison of madmoneymonster.com. I think whatever flavor of fire you're pursuing, whether it's Fior, Coast Fi, Barista Fi, Lean Fire, Fat Fire, Slow Fi, Dumpster Fire, etc., the main thing most of us are looking for is financial security and more autonomy over our time. And by the way, this can be achieved whether you reach financial independence or not. I'm fascinated by opposition to the concept of fire because from my perspective, there are no rules to fire and there's no right way to pursue it. Many people believe that it requires a high income or not having kids or a savings rate over 50% or reaching your fine number as quickly as possible. I think the only thing that people in the movement agree on is to live below your means. Everything else is up for debate. There isn't a right way to reduce expenses, increase income, save, invest, and spend. That's why we're quickly approaching 2,000 episodes of this show. There are so many different ways to approach how you handle money. I believe each of us has a unique set of circumstances, skills, and preferences that we can leverage in different ways to chart our own course when it comes to building wealth. I don't think it's possible to copy someone else's path to financial freedom, but I see that as a good thing because why would we want to rob ourselves of the joy of writing our own stories? If you'd like to hear more from me on this topic, check out a video on the Economy Conference YouTube channel titled Fire Misconceptions, Assumptions, and Criticisms. And that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day, and I'll see you on the Thursday show tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.